Switched On IT is proudly brought to you by Oz Hosting, Cloud Made Easy. Welcome to Switched On IT. This is the show where we talk about everything IT. I'm Barry. Uh, over the last few weeks, we have been talking about Ray's model for social media engagement. Now, you would have, if you've been watching the series, you would have noticed that we've gone through the several steps of that uh, three uh, section model. Uh, now, today we're going to, because we've now laid out all of the theory of that for you, we want to actually start looking at some practical applications of it and, and how do businesses actually apply this model to their particular setting. So today we have a guest, another guest with us. Uh, he's there with us now. Um, in the middle screen there, we have Graham Strang from Hip Pocket Workwear. Welcome to the show, Graham. Hello, everyone. Um, and uh, welcome Doug Endersby from Sydney. G'day, Barry. G'day, everyone. And Ray Sydney Smith from in Pennsylvania today. Hello, hello. Hi. Um, now, uh, Ray, what we're going to do today, as I understand it, is to uh, let you chat to Graham about his business, which is Hip Pocket Workwear here in Toowoomba. And uh, I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, you're going to interview Graham and talk about his website, which is uh, on the screen here behind me, uh, and also his uh, social media engagement. So I'll turn this over to you now and let's see what we can do with applying your model to a real business. Fantastic. So, so Graham, what Doug and I really want to do for the audience is to help them get to know you a little bit better. And that way we can set the stage in terms of how we would actually look at using listening, speaking and connecting as a metrics for being able to really level up your social media presence, uh, just generally your digital marketing and putting some of those pieces together for you. Uh, can you start with just introducing yourself to the audience so they know uh, a little bit more about Hip Pocket Workwear and Safety to Woomba and what it is you do, and then we can kind of move on from there. Um, no worries, mate. Um, well, I'm Graham Strang. I'm the general manager of Hip Pocket Worker and Safety Toowoomba. Um, we are part of the uh, Hip Pocket uh, franchise, which there's currently 45 stores Australia wide. Um, it's probably the best franchise I think I've ever been involved in. We pay 3.7% uh, franchising fee. We have to be 60% workwear. Then we, need to, we can pretty much go for our lives from there. We can sell just to that women's underwear if we wanted to, but we don't. <laughs> um, the store here in Toowoomba operates six days a week. Um, it's a very family operated business. If you walk in, you'll find my wife, myself, uh, my head staff member is also my sister-in-law. Um, my children all work through the business. Um, the business itself is actually, uh, we're uniform and safety and footwear specialists. So we do everything from um, sporting wear, corporate wear, work wear, um, into, into all types of businesses, sporting teams, um, general wear. Um, we are a very retail focused business. Um, so, but you can walk into us and get uniforms embroidered, screen printed, digitally printed, sublimated. Um, we, so we can decorate with just about anything. Um, footwear is a third of what we do. So, and we deal with as much Australian made footwear as we can. Um, we've modeled our business. So we're on not being, not playing in the cheap market. We, we rather play in the top tier and provide the, the better service and the better levels of, of access for customers so that they can so that they're not just um, they're not well, buying something for nothing, they're getting the experience to go with it. Um, we operate for, for in a, as well as our website, we operate Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and our Google listings on a regular basis, showing who we are on the inside uh, of the store, so big and inclusive, so, so people can see that it is real people, but then also showcasing what we do um in how we decorate different people's logos and those sorts of things fantastic doug do you have any questions for graham in terms of understanding what the business does where it does it and how it does it 
No, I, I think that's a terrific summary. I, I completely understand. So it'll be interesting to to dig into, um, you know, the social media and, and um, you know, first of all, I guess, uh, listening and, and uh, how they're tackling that. Yeah, so, so let's start with kind of measurement. Uh, can you give us kind of a, a, a general breakdown in terms of uh, whether or not social what you're doing on social networks. And, and again, we want to be very clear that social media is a type of posting, right? It's content that you're posting mm. that other people can engage in. The social networks are where we post that content typically. So as you're out there using social networks like Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, as well as uh, you know using the local directory, which is Google My Business, it sounds like you're using quite effectively. Where do you get most of your business from in that arena digitally? Um. Look, it's a, it is locally. It's actually, strangely enough, it's 65% women. Um, that's going off all our analytics. So we uh, we have the theory that, especially in the workwear department, that uh, it's the wives, the girlfriends, the sisters, the mothers, the grandmothers. They're all um, they're all sticking their foot in the door to come get their uniforms for their, their partners things because usually how the small business is set up. Um, most of the time it's down. Hi, this is Sarah and Bron looking after our feet at Hip Pocket Toowoomba. Lace up, zip side, pull on, men's, women's, kids, healthcare and construction. Get fitted for your shoes and check out our range of work socks. At, at Hip, Hip Pocket, Pocket, we rock it. Looking for exposure for your next event or function? Take your next community event, training seminar, sports event, official opening, function, concert or exhibition live to the world with PTV Channel O and Power FM's unique live simulcast. We can turn your next local event into a worldwide sensation for a fraction of what you would expect to pay. No matter what the event, PTV Channel O and Power FM can take your message to our audience. Invite the world to your party by phoning 0431 390 920 or email feedback at ptvchannelo.com. Power FM is total entertainment. From the morning drive with Fiona and Jeff to the drive home with Jeff Black. On the weekends, catch the Crazy Kevin Show, Dennis Mitchell's Breakfast with the Beatles, the Semi-Pro Sports Show, and Racing Nation with James O'Shea, plus the music you grew up with. Keep your radio dial locked on Toowoomba's Power FM, celebrating 10 years. You'll find us at 88.0 on the FM dial or online at www.powerfmradio.com.au. So, so Graham, from, from here, what I'd like to really understand for, for you is what do you feel like is the most challenging components of marketing using social media on these various social networks? It's, it's finding that little sweet spot where, it, you know, they, they, there's all the different programs you can use that auto posts to them all, but they all punish you in a little bit of their own way if you're using that, even Facebook, even Facebook using its own um, social post to which you can post to Instagram and Google, still they still don't quite give you the same reach as if you're doing it generically. Um, I just find the struggle I have at times is because everyone is different, you just can't whack the same post across everyone, which I tend to do a little bit at times if I'm in a rush. But you've got to sit down and do the right size images all the way across. You've got to tailor the posts accordingly. That I find that is tricky because it just and with the changing algorithms all the time. You know, for the generic punter, I I just I, I struggle to see how someone who doesn't doesn't do it day in day out how they can have an effective social media presence with the you know, the way especially Facebook especially because they change their algorithms so much. Yeah. It's, oh, I just find it very difficult at times to, to be effective, even, even if it's something that you know, and even your customers see the, see that image in store going, oh, that's fantastic. But you know that if, if you're posting it socially, that's probably not going to go very far. So talk to me about what content you want people to see to drive that ideal audience member to the site because I'm really curious about where you're coming from in terms of the the social content leading people back to the to the site, which would then want to drive them to 
go into the store because that's your ultimate goal it sounds like for me what what's the what's the connection there i'm trying to figure out what the connection there is when when it comes to the the social media you want to lead people into the store it sounds like that's your your foot traffic is your ultimate goal how do you choose the content then that helps you uh connect those pieces i'm trying to figure out how you how you connect those two two dots for each other for, for It'll, it sounds silly, but a lot of the dots we connect is around our networking. Uh, we do a lot of local community work as well. So uh, the way I look at it is is that I can post as much product as I like, but most customers will see that product on 10 or 15 other social media pages because it's the same stuff. It's about our people, how we do things, how we work in the local community. If they're building those personal and virtual relationships with everyone they're more inclined to come and visit us because they want to come and see sarah they want to come and see graham they want to come and see Tila. they want to come and see max they want to come and see brad you know it's those it's those building those interpersonal relationships virtually and physically that's how we build that's how we've we're always worked on building our um foot traffic fantastic so Doug, go for just, it. just, yeah, just, just to sort of jump in there with a with, with a question. So, it it sort of sounds to me as though you you're using social media really effectively to um, to create that that personal relationship that the business has got. You know, real people with faces and names, and they're approachable, um, and they're knowledgeable, which are which are all the things that we want when we when we go into a um, a store. To to what extent do you think? Um, your, the, the social is actually uh, enriching the customer's relationship with the store because they've been in there. Because I notice you've got a very, you know, you've got a big um, shop front, a big retail presence in Toowoomba. And I would imagine most of the people in, in Toowoomba would, would already know that you exist. So, I hope so. <laughs> is, it, is it the chicken? Yeah. Is it the chicken or the egg? Are you, is social media the, the kind of the initial touch point? And then they come into the store, or is it actually the reverse? And and somebody's a lot of people have been in the store at some point, but then you're just continuing the uh, you know the relationship and the friendship by effective use of I'd social media. It's, it's Which way do you B. see it going? Um, mm. It's point B. It's interesting because we do things like we have customers now. We've built the relationships that they've had a baby. They will just about straight after immediately family. The baby comes to the shop so the staff can meet the baby. And when right. we will actually take okay. those photos, put, put it on our social media. And that's why even with, with our customers, you'll see our posts about our customers' um, uniforms and everything. We involve our customers in that because it's also the touch points that if they're starting, if they're resharing, if they're celebrating what we're doing with them and for them, it's creating those touch points back to their customer bases where they're saying, oh, these people are good enough to buddy, give them a shout out. Let's have a look. Mm. And it's yeah. all genuine. So, so we genuinely enjoy celebrating all this stuff. It's and that's the bit I the big mm. bit I drive with our socials. Whatever we do, it's real. Yeah, and so that's a, that's a really great, uh, you know, in a sense, viral approach because you're kind of leapfrogging onto their social media activities and uh, you know just mm. getting that that double double level of exposure. Sorry, Ray, I, I just sort of jumped in here. I know you were going to ask something. No, not to worry at all. Not to worry at all. I'm I'm more more curious about the operational components here. So when we talk about the listen, speak, and connect perspective, what we're really concerned about for you is how you want to be able to tighten up your success metrics when it comes to this. Now, increasing foot traffic is something that you're you're identifying as a goal. And again, the 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 um the piece that I'm trying to get at is 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 the social uh, what types of content drive the biggest amounts of foot traffic versus the other content that you might, might be posting that might be useful and interesting and fun to people? Um, you know, like I care about the parts that are actually driving sales. So those are the things that are um, potentially driving foot traffic, but also driving uh, people to walk in the store and buy something. Do you are you able to parse that out or at least have a running theory? Um, look, the running theory, probably the ones of those is when we get those, you're, it's, it's a lot of the posts there, um, I use Canva and Corel a lot, and we actually, they see those really nice posts of those really standout uniforms, 
um, and then we do those nice business, uh, the business post about, and we find they drive us a lot of businesses because people are seeing their friends' uniforms and how we're bringing them to life. And in the inquiries, we're getting off those. Um, it's probably better on our Facebook page than anything there, Barry, um, to show, you must maybe have to scroll down a bit, but to show how you can bring people's shirts to life. Um, they don't think we've got it much on the website. Um, it's it, we've kept the website fairly simple. We don't want to overcomplicate it for people. We won't be able to click through. Um, like if you go down a bit, you'll see the Valhalla caps, but it's um, I don't know we get how to explain it. But when we post, you'll see that we'll say you know new uniforms for blah blah blah. We actually give them a business. Uh, we tag them, give them a bit of a business plug. Um, and we've come up with this tagline that says, thank you for trusting us with your branding. Um, we're trying to really drive that home to people that we will look after it. We're not going to rob stitches out of logos. We're not going to half ass it. We, we include you in every step of the process. So once, once you pick up your uniforms and you go sit in your car, you look back at the bag and you go, yep, I'm happy. I made the choice to do exactly what's sitting in the car with me. That's great. So, so what I'm what I'm looking at when when I'm seeing this is uh, a point of of potential improvement here would be mm -hmm. um, having your customers actually visibly in the shots. I see that you're taking photographs of the product, and that's really great. Um, what what is even better, you know, just like as a as a little bit of a point of improvement, would be actually having the customers take the photographs of themselves and sharing those photos. If Welcome to the matrix. Doing so. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> you see, we have we get the occasional one, but we have so many people who just are not keen to have their photo taken. It's it's a challenge I have with the social world we live in. You would think that everyone would be in there like Flynn going, mm. but no. <laughs> Um, we, we get them as we can. We, we ask them. Everyone says, oh, I'm happy to take a photo of the shirt. Um, I, ideally, I want people with their uniform on with a couple of my staff around them saying new uniforms. Or so. We just haven't quite mastered the, uh, the sentence that says, get a free shirt and have a photo with us. Yeah, you're going to have to figure out what that what that uh, mm. carrot is uh, to be able to get people to to show themselves in their uniforms. Uh, it could be as Look, easy it, as asking well, you, the if employer. You, if you go back, prob if you go back twelve months pre COVID, we used to have heaps of them. Ever since oh, the COVID thing has happened, people get come in, fly into our shop, they grab the uniforms and they leave, or we're couriering them to them. It's it's been a real change in the last. 12 months, I suppose, on that whole attitude. Do you? People used to stop and have a yarn and talk crap, and and it was always it was very social in the shop where it's not as much as it used to be. People are, are very much in and out, and that is, I think, a lot of, lot to do. Like like now at the moment, you if you're in store now, you have to have one of these on. Um, it's just taken away that bit of relationship in store building. I find everyone's just wants to be out. Yeah, and probably yeah, and what people will happen probably is, don't you know, want to have will... their picture taken with a mask on either. No, that's the no. only way. That's the only way I want a picture taken of me. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, but uh, but my, my reason for asking and, and actually making that point of improvement, Graham, is not because you weren't doing it. You were doing it. I bet that post COVID nineteen, people will actually go back to doing that, and you should continue doing it. Right, which is that yes, the more absolutely. customers see themselves in the product, the more likely they are going to be um, open to the idea of seeing yeah. themselves. Uh, in purchasing from you. And that's for, yep. for viewers, it's so important what Graham is talking about here, which is that people want to see themselves with the solution, which is that they wanted a logo sh logoed shirt, they wanted a branded product, they got it from your store and they wanna see themselves being able to do the same thing. So it's very, very powerful to show your own uh, product on your customer experiencing the product in social. Uh, because that just allows yeah. people to be able to share it. As Doug noted before, you know, that's something that gets people to want to share your content out to the world. But at the same time, it, it shows that if I have a problem, I know how to get the solution and I see other people like me having that, that solution solved, that problem solved with your company. And that's yeah. what we want to be able to show over and over and over again in social.
Hi, this is Sarah and Bronze staying cool at Hip Pocket Toowoomba. Lightweight cotton work shirts in a huge range of colours, shorts, water bottles, sunscreen. Come in and see us six days or we are happy to post to you. At Hip Pocket, we rock it. When the going gets tough, advertising is a must. Thousands of potential customers make buying decisions every day based on advertising they've seen or heard on radio and television. Are you losing sales because potential customers don't know what you offer? Get your business, product or service in front of thousands of potential customers with a joint advertising package on Power FM and PTV Channel O. Capture a multimedia audience with our affordable radio, TV, media advertising package. Stay ahead of the pack by contacting Barry on 0431 390 920 or email feedback at ptvchannelo.com or jeff at powerfmtoowoomba at gmail.com. Have you got a wedding, birthday, corporate event or even a school disco coming up? Well, make your special occasion memorable. A professional DJ and compare really makes a difference. So go crazy with Crazy Kevin, international DJ. He's available for all your entertainment needs. Just call 0459 336 832 or email crazykevindj at gmail.com. Um, talk to me a little bit about the posting schedule. How often do you post and um, how do you how do you mix it up in terms of the content that you put on the different social networks? Um, I post at least every second day or every day across all the platforms. Um, mixing it up really, the, to, to be honest with you, I've tried planning it, I've tried coming up with schedules and things, but the way our shop rolls and evolves, there's always something different happening every day. So it is literally that looks cool i'm doing that and the way i have the way i've got my canva and everything set up i can load the image rip the background out of it put something on put a logo on it and post it and i'm done in 15 minutes across the board so Fantastic. sort of well, it's uh, it's it, it's because i manage it all myself and i've got a reasonable eye for it i know it, it it's, it's easier for me it's it's not as easy for everyone else but i can just grab stuff and just do it um if I'm away on holidays, I do leave a schedule for my staff. I've got a couple of good girls who do it for me, and they, you know, and they put it all together. But really, honestly, uh, it's it's uh, on the fly. And are you doing this from your mobile device exclusively, or are you doing this from the desktop? Uh, pretty much exclusively from my mobile, because literally I've got all four all four platforms set up across the on the bottom of my phone. Over the top of them, I just I have my Canva set up there, and I can just load and go, load and go. Fantastic. Well, um, for those of you who don't know and are, are using Canva, Canva is a graphic design tool that allows you to be able to produce uh, different types of, of visual content, whether that be uh, photographic content or visually laid out content as well as video. Uh, they can yeah. even produce GIFs or GIFs uh, and very, very powerful software. Um, in the paid version, I'm pretty sure, and I'm not sure about in the mobile version, it has the ability to do what's called magic resizing. And I was just actually checking my phone to see whether or not I can find it, but I couldn't, um, can't right now. But the, the magic resizing function allows you to be able to select a whole bunch of different uh, uh, size types. So you can actually say, I want a Facebook post, I want an Instagram post, I want a Twitter yep. post. And then once you've laid it out, it will automatically, magically resize it to lay, lay yeah, out and just, resize it. Yeah, so it's worth looking into. It's not always yeah. perfect. Uh, I, I I note that it's it's not always perfect, but it does speed up the process for me, hands down. Yeah. If I want to be able to turn yeah. a bunch of, of Instagram posts into Instagram story formats, it can really speed up that process by just yeah. you know guessing at the best layout for the format. Mm -hmm. So just really worth yeah. uh, kind of checking out from there. What type of engagement do you get on your posts? And how much does that actually increase or decrease uh, foot traffic? Um, I range between uh, just using Facebook as, as my as my ground. I, I range between five hundred to probably uh, two and a half thousand reach, depending on the post I'm doing. Um, LinkedIn is probably a bit higher. 
Um, but it all depends on what I'm posting about what I'm doing. It's just typical social media is that you'll, you'll post something, you're thinking this is a ripper and it'll reach 180 people. And then you'll post something like this, I'm, not, but I'm, I'm tired and I'm bored, this will do, and then the thing will go bushka. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's one thing I do struggle with social media is that you are bound to what their analytics are looking for at that time. And I just find that it's very hit and miss. I can post two things that are very similar, like within 80% of each other, and they'll have two totally different reaches. So, so going back to the premise here, which is that you don't know this, so that that's not your, your it's not you uh, generally. Our our ultimate goal when it comes to really understanding social uh, media is that we want to actually bring people back to our websites where the originating content lives. And so you're actually doing something very different than than what other folks are doing in the sense that you're posting yeah. so solely on social media with an with an intent to be able to drive foot traffic yes. uh, from those social posts. And so just one other point that people should kind of keep in mind here is that a, a business like Graham's is doing uh, one layer of, of content marketing, which is in essence, not driving people to the website because you're not trying to promote e-commerce. And so that's totally fine. And it seems to be working for your business. One level beyond that would be to be able to figure out what content you're producing on the website itself to be able to attract people to it so that you can yeah. capture more of that, uh, that traffic and figuring out who those people are and why they're coming yeah, to the store. That's next generally. on my list. I've actually employed, um, two new staff who are then going to allow me to get out get out of the shop a little bit further to get into that next layer because that's next than a list we've actually just been through a whole redevelopment of our website our portals on a b2b basis and on b2c so that's next so to speak that's fantastic that's uh, great to hear that's great to hear yeah. doug any questions for graham otherwise just um, you know, a, a sense of the of, of the differential between um, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Is there, in, in any respect, uh, the those particular um, tools are, are, are engaging with a different type of audience? So obviously, with something like LinkedIn, I imagine it might be a little bit more corporate than Facebook, which I might imagine might be a little bit more sort of family business customer base well but i don't know how, how's it it's, look? it's funny i sort of look i look at instagram and i go okay 15 to 25 i look at facebook and i go 25 to 40 and then linkedin i go 40 plus uh, mm -hmm. that's just a bit of a metric i have in my head um yeah i've actually gone viral on linkedin a couple of times now um mm -hmm. i had a big weight loss journey lost 28 kilos all those sorts of things. I tied a lot of that weight loss journey in my LinkedIn in and around the shop so that then all of a sudden people are going, you know, this is a motivated person, you know, they're, they're doing something that's good as well as running a small business. Let's have a really good look at them because they're obviously highly motivated. And on LinkedIn, that has worked sensationally. Right. Um, Instagram, we just keep it fun and it's it's fairly light. Uh, Facebook is where we have that really consistent drill um, because yeah. regardless of what everyone says, as far as I'm concerned, there's still the bulk of our traffic comes through Facebook. Yeah, yeah. That's, and are there, have really there been any have, have there been any campaigns which you've looked at and and you know it's really nailed it? So you know, I, I mean, for example, I I can see you've got one where you know, you post something in LinkedIn and you say, hey, guess what? It's raining and who's going to win the gumboot battle? And you've got pictures yep. of staff in the store armed with gumboots. What, what have been the, the, the real sort of zingers and what have been the ones that were, were, were duds that you thought had all the, all the right elements? Um, the gumboot one actually went quite well on Instagram, but it didn't on any of the other two. Um, the Easter one that I posted a photo of my daughter eating an Easter egg, went really well on LinkedIn, but sort of only plopped along on the other two. Um, sorry, the really big winners I've had is around when we're doing something community based. 
Um, so we have a lot of, of involvement in Australia with the men's shed movement. I actually sponsor five men's sheds and pay for all the uniforms. Um, so anytime we talk about those guys, especially in LinkedIn and that old, and not old is the wrong word, but that more corporate business structure, they just go wooshka, wooshka. But I try not to overdo it because I'm not big on bragging. It's more the, you know, I, I help all these people, so it helps me sleep better at night. Um, they have gone really well. Um, uh, it's it's hard to put to, to think of action on top of my head. I think if I went and had a quick scroll back, I could probably find some. But I hadn't really thought about looking too far for any of them today. I apologise. No, that, look, that's okay. And I think it's one of the things about um, you know promotion and and the sort of things that are going to work in these sort of environments is that they're very hard to predict. And that's kind of what I was yes. sort of driving towards. Absolutely. And, and um, you know, I, I've sort of worked in, in um, you know, subscription model marketing where there's, you know, teams of promotion guys and they design promotions and then you, you test them and then you, you know, finally decide, well, you know, what is going to, to actually work. And it was always, you know, in my younger days, it was always amazing to me to sit in the room with all the guys that write promotional campaigns and look at 10 or 15 different promotional campaigns and you'd say to them, well, which one do you expect is going to be the absolute winner? And they'd look at me like I've got two heads and they say, but Doug, we haven't tested them yet. <laughs> and so even people that have been in the business, you know, for, for most of their yeah. working life with a lot of these things, until you actually run it, you, you don't actually know. And, and so I guess mm. what, what I'm seeing with you is you just keep on pushing stuff out there and, and, you, and you kind of know that some of it's going to fly and some of it, you know, yeah. won't go so Look, well. If but I can give time, anyone advice on knowledge. social media from my end, it's it's consistency. Mm. If you have a plan, you have to. If you've got a plan, you got to put it in play. And with social media, you've got to be you've got to be able to do it for two or three months. If you're going to throw something out there for two weeks, it's you, it's you've got to be able to. You've got to if you across the platforms if you're consistent at least the least your audience that follows you will will follow it consistently if you do nothing one week you do five posts the next week you do one post the next week after then you ignore it for two weeks your socials will just steadily slow it's consistency that that's probably rule number one that i tell anyone who gets involved with it if you're going to do it you've got to do it Hi, this is Sarah and Bron staying cool at Hip Pocket Toowoomba. Lightweight cotton work shirts in a huge range of colours, shorts, water bottles, sunscreen. Come in and see us six days or we are happy to post to you. At, at Hip, Hip Pocket, Pocket, we rock it. Have you got a wedding, birthday, corporate event or even a school disco coming up? Well, make your special occasion memorable. A professional DJ and compare really makes a difference. So go crazy with Crazy Kevin, international DJ. He's available for all your entertainment needs. Just call 0459 336 832 or email crazykevindj at gmail.com. Check out the Plainland Country Markets on the third Sunday of each month from 7am till 12 noon next to the Plainland Hotel. There's plenty to do to keep you occupied. Browse the soaps, candles and crafts, plus the variety of plant stalls. The mobile dog wash will be on site. Get your furry friend washed while you have a wander around. Take a break and enjoy the sausage sizzle and an espresso coffee. So bring the kids, the dog, in fact the whole family to the Plainland Country Markets the third Sunday of each month next to the pub at Plainland. I'm, I'm really curious, how, how do you work with uh, email in conjunction with your social media? Uh, do, you, do you send uh, out email to clients? Do you, do you run a newsletter or anything like that? No, okay. not one. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. That's great. Uh, we, we've deliberately done it. Um, it came from a pet hate from me, from spam email. I spend my life deleting spam emails, and it just <laughs> gives me the whoopsies. And I'm like, I just can't do it to anyone else, so I refuse to do it. Yeah, that's, that's, see, that's the, totally I think I look at, well, see, social media is a choice. You can choose mm -hmm. to look at it or not to. If someone is forcibly sending me repeated emails to look at my product, it tend the end, I just, I will unsubscribe, remove, and I'll never shop with them again. 
Yeah, I'll I'll give the I'll annoyed. give the opposite side. Yeah, I'll give the opposite side to this, which is you have a totally legitimate perspective, and I actually share that perspective. <laughs> uh, the other side to that is that for most businesses, uh, email marketing is one of the most effective mechanisms for being able yeah. to drive sales. So. Um, not particularly in in your world, and that's okay. The, yeah. the the point for the audience though is to recognize that if you want to do email marketing, you cannot just be spamming people. Uh, you must be sending yeah. quality content that they that they care about. Exactly. And the more people the more people care about the content, whether that's social media. Uh, or email messages, they have to be content that is that is of enough value that someone doesn't receive it and go, you know what, I just want to unsubscribe from this, you know, rubbish, uh, you know, so yeah. just recognize that what you're what you're experiencing, lots of other people are experiencing. And we have to exactly as marketers overcome that issue, which is that we need to make yeah. sure that the content we're publishing, whether that be on social media, by ads, and email or otherwise are making sure that it's high quality so people don't want to unsubscribe yes can, oh, can you talk a little agree. bit about I... go ahead right. go ahead i uh, so i absolutely agree with that is that is that it's quality over quantity um even our socials i you know if if i if it's a if it's a post i'm like eh about i tend not to do it because i'm like if i'm just throwing something out there for the sake of doing it i'd rather post nothing um and the same with email marketing i don't mind if it's that um, there's a guy in Australia called Scott Pape, and they call him the Barefoot Investor. Um, he does. I get I get one email a month from him talking about investing and, and all those sorts of things. I tend to read it because it's once a month, and it's worth reading. Yeah, absolutely. You know, frequency for uh, different uh, buyers are also important, right? When we when we talk about the idea of social media, it has it's just a tendency. It's not not a rule, yep. but um, women tend to be much more social on social networks. And so you have a predominantly uh, female audience. So it makes a lot of sense that your social media would then be interactive with that audience. And so it makes sense that you uh, concentrate there. Um, I would not be against you in, uh, I, know, I know you have a great objection to doing it, but I wouldn't be against your business uh, having some kind of monthly newsletter that actually talked about the the charitable work you're doing i know that you want to be kind of um, timid and, and uh, only share it on certain occasions but yeah. i think it would actually be it would actually be quite nice for your um target audience to see the good work that you're doing in just a mm. singular well done email once a month i'm not saying that you need to do yeah. it but just know that that's an that's an option for businesses like yours where you are doing a lot of charitable work as a part of the organization in the community and you're a local business yeah. that wants to do that work uh who doesn't want to hear about that um kind of inspirational yeah. and um and heartfelt work that you're doing because it from my perspective it doesn't sound like you're doing this from kind of a uh you know I'm going to get more business just because I'm doing this. You're doing it authentically. And that's the kind of thing that people actually do want to hear. People hear yeah. all kinds of businesses doing things just for the sake of getting attention. You're doing it because you're doing good in the community and people want to be able to know that that's happening. So, you know, I know you're not going to do it and that's okay. <laughs> but uh, for those viewers who are out there who are genuinely doing good work out in the community, yeah. do not be afraid to send email. Uh, just know that the frequency is going to depend upon the target audience and you know there are going to yeah. be others who don't want to get the email there are going to be others who do and one of the important components here is uh, the mix here which is that you have different uh, platforms because people want choice so for example i'm very unlikely to consume social content because i'm just not on social media in the same ways that other audiences are but I actually yeah. manage and deal with my consumption uh, primarily via email. So if you don't have an email newsletter, I lose sight of the fact that you exist because I'm yeah. not following on, on social, right? So yeah. we have to be mindful of the fact that different people are just different in that sense. And so having a diversified content strategy, meaning promoting across different channels, equates to a staying top of mind to different audiences. So just kind of keep keeping yeah. that in mind as we, as we um, yeah. have that dialogue. Um, do you have any questions for us? Barry, do you have any questions for us? And otherwise we can kind of start to wrap up in terms of the conversation. Um, um, I, no, I don't pretty have any good. questions, Everything you've said Graham... seems to make sense to me. Um, I, um, 
uh, actually looking at my watch i have a shop to open very soon um but <laughs> no look I, I i've enjoyed it actually there's even a couple of things you guys have said to me have made my brain go hmm okay that's that's terrific um now i don't have any questions either uh, the uh, well the un the only thing i would ask is uh, graham uh, if we have uh, people out there watching this show that would like to engage with you um, and uh, get onto your uh, website and social media. First of all, what's your website address? Uh, look, the easiest thing to do, Barry, is literally go to Google and type in Hippocrat Toowoomba. It will bring us up every single time. It'll bring you up uh, just about all our socials. It'll bring up our website. It'll, it'll give you the whole box and dice. Okay, if they want to come and uh, call into the store, what's the store address? How do they find you? Uh, 222 Anzac Avenue, Toowoomba, between Petstock and Horseland. Great. Okay, that's terrific. Ray, um, uh, Doug, any final comments? Just just one comment from me, and that is it's terrific to see that, that uh, Graeme is, is on top of three different um, social media uh, animals, because I, I know for a lot of the people that I talk to, um, they they tend to specialise in one. You know, they are such specialised uh, user interfaces and experiences, uh, and I think it's it's really commendable, Graham, that you're that you're across three of them and, and using them all well and have observed differences in their audiences. So I think that's a great lesson for a lot of small business people out there. Terrific. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, uh, Graham, for being part of the uh, show today. We will be sure to catch up with you again shortly, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing your posts on social media. Thank you, guys. You have a nice day. Yeah, thanks. You, you too. too. Uh, thanks, everyone. And thanks, um, Ray Sidney Smith, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Always happy to be here. And Doug Endersby from Oz Hosting in Sydney, thank you. Thanks, Barry. So, there you have it. Um, this has been Switch on IT. Uh, we've been talking today with Graham Strang from Hip Pocket Workwear and talking about his business and what he does in the Toowoomba area. Um, you already have his details, so we put them up on the screen for you earlier. Uh, if you have any other questions that you would like to ask the team or ask Graham, uh, be sure to send us an email. Our address is feedback at ptvchannelo.com. Uh, if you've got any suggestions about this show or anything that uh, you would like to see on it, let us know. And don't forget also that uh, this show and all of the previous shows uh, you can find on our video on demand. Uh, just go down the left-hand side of the site and pick up Switched on IT. You'll be able to see everything that we've done and you can review it all. This has been Barry for Switched on IT. Uh, we will look forward to seeing you again next week when we talk about everything IT.